Okay, it's going to be a review of Backlash 2006, as it is, uh, I guess, WrestleMania Backlash season. So we're going all the way back to April 30th, 2006. This is actually a Raw uh, brand-only pay-per-view. Um, this is from Lexington, Kentucky. So we're going to Rupp Arena. This is home of uh, Coach Colleon and the uh, Kentucky Wildcats. And uh, the attendance was 14,000. Hot crowd. You, you, you definitely had a really hot crowd. Um, it, it definitely felt like a casual WWE mainstream audience, but at the same time, it, it, it just kind of felt like the WrestleMania 22, you know, smart Mark crowd was kind of manipulating a lot of the other cities as well. You know, once you get into, uh, you know, the, the meat of 2006, uh, the pay-per-view buy rate, it's kind of weird. They, they have it on the side that is 230,000. But then if you look at the right up here on Wikipedia, it says, the, the event received 273,000 buys, which was more than the previous year's uh, backlash. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the 273,000. That looks a little bit more accurate because it's hard to believe that Judgment Day the next month um, outdrew uh, backlash. Where, you know, if, if you remember, Judgment Day was actually headlined by JBL and Rey Mysterio. So, yeah, without a doubt, I, I, I would I would assume that Backlash did a much better buy rate than than Judgment Day. So, so yeah, um, interesting thing about this show, they actually brought Jim Ross back for commentary. So Joey Styles got actually bumped from WrestleMania, and then he gets bumped from Backlash. So he actually quit the next night. So he cut a shoot promo. It, it was a good promo. I would definitely say that was one of the best Raw promos. You know, maybe ever. It's definitely probably in the top 20. And it's actually a DVD extra. So I actually did watch it. So he was like, all right, I get bumped from WrestleMania. Fine, fine. You you don't want me to call WrestleMania. But then I get bumped from Backlash. I'm not good enough to call Backlash. He's like, I'm sick of our chairman who mocks God. And then he and then he quits the company. But hey, you know, Joey Styles would uh would call ECW one night stand. They brought back ECW. But it was cool at the time to see Joey Styles uh, actually quit. But, you know, he just had a rough time. You know, I, the, you heard reports that whole year about how Vince was in his ear to tell better stories. You know, because I'm not a sports entertainment storyteller, I get bumped from Backlash. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, check out the Joey Styles promo from Raw. I think it was May 1st, 2006, uh, to be exact. But, yeah, let, let's get underway with this show. A uh, very inconsistent card. O overall, I thought this was um, definitely a good follow-up to WrestleMania 22. I, I thought the main event actually was better than any match from WrestleMania 22. And without a doubt, it's it's definitely one of the best triple threat matches I think John Cena's ever been in. And uh, I would even say a top five WWE match of 2006. I, I really thought it was that good. So definitely check out the main event if you haven't yet. The Intercontinental Championship match with you know my guy Rob Van Dam is also... Uh, an awesome match, and uh, but you know the the pay per view kind of got off to a weird start. Uh, you got Carlito taking on Chris Masters uh, to open up the show. So Carlito and Masters, you know these guys had a hell of a run in '05 and '06. You know they actually, you know, were in the finals of the Elimination Chamber with John Cena, which shocked the shit out of me at the time. Um, and then they tagged up together at WrestleMania 22, but Carlito turned babyface. And, um, you know, they, these these two guys turned on each other. Carlito here, he kind of had a little bit of a honeymoon factor with this crowd. Crowd was pretty much in the Carlito. You know, I, I wish Masters had gotten, you know, more of a chance um, when he was clean. You know, at this time, you could definitely tell the wellness policy definitely affected his push a little bit here. Um, you know, there wasn't anything too noticeable um, as as far as Masters botching anything. There was one time where he was supposed to kick out and, and he didn't kick out and the fans were kind of getting on him. Jim Ross actually got on him as well. But other than that, I thought Masters looked good here. Masters definitely had a lot of potential with the master lock in his physique. I know Punk was very uh, pro Chris Masters, especially towards the end before they uh, uh, fired him. But, uh, but yeah, you know, Carlito, he actually countered the master lock into a backbreaker and actually got his foot on the rope, which I don't know. It, it, it kind of felt like they wanted Carlito to kind of fill in that void of Eddie Guerrero with the line cheating and stealing thing. But over time, I don't think Carlito, you know, was able to, you know, duplicate that. Obviously, uh, I, I, from what I remember, the fans really turned on him, you know, the very next school year and it culminated in flair cutting, uh, you know, that promo on him with Tory Wilson where he almost humiliated him. But, uh, but yeah, on to, I mean, not a great opener, but 
Uh, the crowd was hot for this, though. I, I thought the fans were actually a little bit generous towards this, uh, to be honest with you. Okay, so next up, you got Umaga taking on Ric Flair. We had Armando Alejandro Estrada, uh, you know, come out and, um, you know, ring announce Umaga at that time. So, yeah, the, the initial Umaga push, it was pretty good, I thought. And, uh, yeah, I mean, th- this this has got to be one of the highlights of Umaga's career. I mean, the, how many times has Flair ever gotten squashed on a pay-per-view? This would be it right here. I mean, the crowd was hot for Flair. Flair did get some chops in there, but ultimately, it, it definitely felt like Flair got squashed. I mean, the match the match barely lasted over three minutes, and we move on from there. Next up, we got another WrestleMania rematch. We got uh, Mickey James defending the WWE Women's Championship against Trish Stratus. Yeah, not quite the magic that uh, WrestleMania was. <laughs> WrestleMania had some controversial moments with Trish uh, being grabbed by Mickey James which was definitely the highlight of that match. And that crowd was just incredible at WrestleMania 22 here. Um, it, it just, they just couldn't get it going. I, I believe Trish actually took a bump over the top rope and she dislocated her shoulder. It looked like they called an audible and uh, rushed into the finish with Mickey actually choking Trish Stratus out. So the uh, referee called for a disqualification. So you had a couple of matches on the show that just had really abrupt and really awkward finishes. And uh, yeah, so yeah, nowhere near the magic of WrestleMania. So yeah, we're pretty much off to a weak start, but uh, def- things definitely pick up here. We got the Intercontinental Championship and the Money in the Bank on the line in the same match. Holy shit, I forgot the Money in the Bank was on the line here. So we got Shelton Benjamin, the uh, IC champion, uh, taking on Rob Van Dam at Backlash. So Shelton had that, you know, it was one year ago at this point where Shelton had that magical um, backlash and, and raw match with Shawn Michaels. So he had the, the classic match with Jericho for the IC title to open up backlash. And then he had, uh, you know, that gold rush match with uh, HBK. So that was, that's definitely the highlight of Shelton's uh, WWE run. So when this, I didn't get to see this live. I was actually still at school right before uh, final exams in, in, in I guess, uh, the spring of 2006. This is April 30th to be exact. Uh, so I remember being on a message board and I was like, how, how did Van Damme and Shelton come out? Was it better than uh, Shelton's match with Jericho at Backlash? And, and most people were like, no, it wasn't quite that good, but it was still good. But I'll tell you what, man, I would say it was just as good. I, I thought this was good stuff. You know, I, I wouldn't say they had the best chemistry in the world, but, uh, you know, these these are two of the best athletes in WWE history, you know, going out of here. I, I thought Van Damme looked motivated. You know, he wrestled this match like he knew WWE had huge plans for him. And Van Dam was great here. I, I would definitely say this is one of the this is one of the rare instances where Van Dam was able to connect with a casual WWE audience and the fans are just a hundred percent behind them. You know, this wasn't Chicago, it wasn't New York, it wasn't, you know, an ECW city. This is Kentucky, you know. So this is uh this is not your typical ECW crowd and and Van Dam was able to get the whole fan base behind him. I thought Shelton looked great too. Shelton busted out a beautiful counter to the Rolling Thunder, probably the best Rolling Thunder counter you have ever seen. So Shelton actually countered the Rolling Thunder into a uh, Samoan drop which came off pretty cool. Uh, Van Dam actually took the sunset flip off the ring apron onto the mat. You, you hadn't seen Van Dam take that bump since Invasion. Yeah, that 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 looks like a excruciating painful bump but uh van damme was able to take it Sheldon actually did bust out the um uh the falcon arrow where he jumps to the top rope delivers the falcon arrow suplex so once again Sheldon looked like uh you know a beast an athletic beast out there it was pretty awesome and yeah the the ending was really cool too you know the the ref bump was a little bit goofy you know Sheldon actually takes the money in the bank Referee, it gets all groggy. So uh, Van Dam is able to do the Van Daminator to the money in the bank, which was really cool. Really, really cool. Van Dam hits the frog splash. And uh, yeah, awesome, awesome match, man. And, uh, you know, they, they did some creative stuff. They, they had a lot of time out there. I thought this was good stuff, man. So yeah, so Shelton must have won the Intercontinental Championship back because I don't remember Van Dam walking into ECW one night stand with the IC title. But yeah, the incredible time. You know, this, you know, I'm not a huge fan of 2006, especially after the 4th of July. I, I just feel like 2006 has so much potential. And this whole Van Damme with the money in the bank and bringing ECW back and, you know, it, it, it just it just created such an exciting 
uh, environment. But, um, you know, it was one of those things where it was just too good to be true. And when you get to Fourth of July weekend, everything just came crumbling down. But, you know, that's pretty well documented. But, yeah. I would definitely say that 2006, at this particular time, I think the WWE, WWE was in the middle of a very exciting time, without a doubt. And, and this, this whole RVD push was definitely, um, you know, very memorable looking back on it. You know, him winning the Money in the Bank at WrestleMania 22, without a doubt, probably the most underrated highlight uh, of that show. So next up, we have a nightmare match. we got Big Show taking on Kane. This was just about Kane promoting that movie. It was going to come out on May 19th. I believe it was called See No Evil. So they did some eye for an eye stuff where, where Kane took out Big Show's eye. Then during the match, Big Show was trying to take out Kane's eye. This was nauseating, man. This was uh, embarrassingly bad. So they started that Bray Wyatt shit, you know, throughout the match where you saw all these red lights come out and some voice was talking to Kane. It was like, May 19th, May 19th, Kane. And uh, so Kane just starts going crazy and he can't focus. And, uh, you know, the match just ended in no contest. Big Show just walks out on him and then Kane pops up. And I don't know if this was a babyface turn for, for Kane. The whole thing just felt like a mess. Definitely the worst thing on the show. So let's just move on. Uh, next up, we got Mr. McMahon and Shane McMahon taking on Shawn Michaels and God. This is a no holds barred match. So, yeah, you know, Vince was... Uh, Vince is over the top on this show. Uh, I, I got to say this about Vince. He still had a lot of life in his promos. The, I, I think after he shaved his head, he was never quite the same. And I think age has really gotten to Vince, in terms of his delivery especially. But, uh, but here, Vince was really over the top. I even said at WrestleMania 22, it, it was almost reminiscent of Trump about how, you know, he was acting. And, uh, you know, he did some really over the top you know, some of the you could argue some of the worst stuff Vince has ever done was on this show. So he did this whole thing backstage where he was mocking uh, the the fish and the bread, you know, that whole religious thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was not good. Then there was a segment with Candace Michelle where she had her cleavage sticking out and she wanted Vince to 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 heal her because she had a chest cold. So all of a sudden, Vince starts like rubbing up against her breast and, and he's like, heal this woman's voluptuous breast. I got I kind of got a kick out of it because, you know, you could tell Vince has a thing for, you know, hot girls with breast implants. And, and so do I to a degree. So I got a kick out of it. But, you know, Shane, Shane was like taken aback by it. in some ways, like Shane. Shane was almost like a baby face here because Vince was just so like obnoxious and over the top with everything he was doing. So, yeah. So. Shawn McMichaels' tag team partner is uh, God here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what do you really say about this? Obviously, there was no one dressed up as God that came out. So when Vince was was definitely mocking uh, this whole, you know, Shawn Michaels being a born-again Christian, Bischoff did some mocking of it as well during the whole Katie Vick thing, but not to this degree, though. So, so when God comes out, it's just like a whole bunch of lights, uh, some cheesy music, you know, really, you know, it, it, it's basically a handicap match. Um, you know, I, I want to say that Vince was triggering Al Pacino and the Devil's Advocate a little bit here. That That's the only movie I could think of where someone really went out of their way to mock God. I remember Al Pacino talking to Keanu Reeves. He's like, God, let me tell you something about God. Obviously, Al Pacino was playing the devil at the end of that movie. But, uh, but yeah, I'll tell you what, if, if you could just look past this whole uh, religious bullshit here with, with, with God being in the match, uh, it was pretty good. You know, the, the fans were really into Shawn Michaels in some ways. You know, Shawn was as good as he ever looked here. The, you know, this, this fan base was really connecting towards him. Shawn just put on a show here. Very reminiscent of WrestleMania 22. It almost felt like the same match at some times. Uh, Vince took some amazing bumps here. He actually took a crossbody off the uh, ramp onto a table. This is a 60-year-old man we're talking about here. Shane was good. You know, Shane brought his energy. Uh, I thought him and Michaels had incredible chemistry. I would have loved to have seen, you know, Sean and Shane uh, at Backlash. You know, they had the match at Saturday night's main event right before WrestleMania. I wish they had held off on that match and had that match here. I think it would have been a lot better. But, yeah, it was feeling like the exact same match. You know, Sean was about to do the elbow drop through the table, the... Vince and Shane, but then all of a sudden the Spirit Squad comes out and Sean actually just jumps onto all five of them with the elbow drop. It looked really cool. 
But then the numbers game catches up to Michaels. The Spirit Squad does their, you know, that that finish looked incredible where they they pop Sean all the way up in the air. Then he goes through the table. Then Vince gets the pinfall there. So yeah, you know, Vince really needed the win here. You know, Vince and Shane needed the win so they could start building up to that whole Degeneration X thing. This whole pay per view is really was really just designed to, you know, get the juices flowing to, to get to that DX reunion uh, in June. Uh, and Vengeance, that whole pay-per-view is just built around the return of Degeneration X as they took on the uh, Spirit Squad. But hey, you know, this handicap here, handicap match here with Shawn Michaels, I would say it was a lot of fun. I mean, in some ways, this has got to be one. I bet you people just look at the description and be like, what the fuck you, uh, is going on here? Shawn Michaels and God. So obviously, it's probably one of the most criticized, uh, you know, WWE matches of all time. Uh, I still thought the match was a lot of fun, though. And, and without a doubt, Sean, Sean was great here. He, he was probably more over than, you know, he normally is, especially with this. You know, the, you got to keep in mind, too, the Kentucky, Kentucky, you could argue, is the Bible Belt. You know, I, I think Kentucky's a little bit more Midwest, you know, Tennessee, Alabama. That's more considered the Bible Belt. But I think you could still classify Kentucky as part of the Bible Belt. So maybe the uh, the atmosphere atmosphere here really kind of triggered a little bit more emotion than it usually would have. So. So, yeah, I think right before the main event, you had a really bad segment featuring Eugene and uh, Matt Stryker, where Eugene actually uh, swallows his, his boogers. So, uh, yeah, don't want to get into that. So let's move on to the uh, triple threat match. Cena cut a really funny promo with uh, Todd Grisham. So Grisham goes like, so, John, half the fans seem to be cheering you and then half the fans seem to be booing you. And then Cena just goes like, oh, really? Well, man, man, thanks for watching the show. So I thought that was a pretty funny promo between Cena and uh, 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 Grisham. You could just tell, like, like C Cena really went through a lot that month. He even he even touched on how you know he he pretty much heard everything of the book from death threats to kudos, at pretty much everything you could have imagined. You know, Cena heard, and uh, yeah, I, I don't think anyone that had to be a hell of an experience. Everything that Cena went through in the month of April two thousand six. So uh, so yeah. So here we go. So Cena actually uh, takes on Triple H and Edge. This is a triple threat match for the WWE Championship. So this this is a hell of a story here with, um, you know, Edge felt like he should have been in the main event of uh, WrestleMania. And uh, Triple H uh, tapped out to John Cena at WrestleMania, wanted his rematch. Um, so, yeah, it, it only made sense to do a triple threat. You could definitely argue that this triple threat, you know, should have been the main event of WrestleMania. And in some ways, it definitely felt like a main event that really exceeded, you know, what John Cena and Triple H did at WrestleMania. I thought this was a hostile environment. I, I thought this is an example of a triple threat match where I felt like they had enough time to really tell a good story. You know, the, the WrestleMania 24 triple threat, I, I, I felt like that felt a little bit rushed, but this felt like more of a main event platform. And this was good stuff, man. I, I would definitely say this was better than a lot of Cena's other uh, triple threat matches. I, I prefer this more than the Taboo Tuesday, you know, main event, which sounds hard to believe because you got Angle and HBK out there. I, I prefer this over Cena's uh, Degeneration X triple threat of Survivor Series. So Cena's been in a lot of triple threat matches, but I, I'd probably say this definitely had the the most hostile environment, man. And, and, and it definitely had a good main event feel here. Uh, I would definitely say this about Triple H. Like, it was this was pretty much just designed to get Triple H over as a baby face. And you can't argue with it, man. You know, I know Edge argued that, you know, he should have had the spot against Cena at WrestleMania. But it definitely felt like in some cases here, Edge was definitely the odd man out. The fans are going crazy uh, for Triple H, man. Uh, they, they definitely were. So... Um, really, this is the bloodiest I've ever seen Triple H get. You know, the, the the only thing that would come close is that last man standing match with Jericho. But yeah, Triple H was bleeding like crazy. But uh, yeah, I I get what they were going for here, man. They they really wanted um, you know, the, in, in some ways, this is the last time you really got to see Prime Triple H in the main event of a pay per view. Uh, you know, he he took a slingshot from Edge, and all of a sudden he took the execution from edge on the announce table it was just bleeding like crazy but it definitely got the fans even more behind them um yeah i mean they did some really good stuff lots of lots of great breakups here there, there was a breakup of the uh there was an electric chair uh that came off really really cool cena was going for the fu uh triple h does the low blow 
to Cena as he's about to hit him with the pedigree. Man, that crowd exploded. Then all of a sudden, Cena does the jackknife pin uh, to Triple H. And uh, Cena gets the victory. Then all of a sudden, Triple H just snaps. He take out, takes out the sledgehammer. Just, uh, you know, beats the crap out of everybody up. Starts showing the Degeneration X sign. And, yeah, I got to say, Triple H looked awesome here. You know, he, his intensity, his uh, all the blood coming down. And, you know, the fans are just going crazy for him. So, th in some ways, this, you know, the, the most important thing coming out of this match is just to get him to transition to becoming a babyface with Degeneration X. The whole, it, it seemed to me like that whole God thing was just, was just so the fans could really want Triple H to fill in that void. I think that's what they were going for more than anything else. But hey, man, I mean, there, there really isn't much to say about the triple threat other than the environment was cool. I thought it, it just had a main event feel. I think that's why I like it more than anything else. And it didn't feel rushed. Uh, in terms of Cena's performance, though, I, I can't say Cena looked great, though. You know, the, the coordination still looked like it was a bit of an issue. Some of the punches just looked a little bit... Yeah, I, I can't say that 2006 Cena was, was Cena in his prime. He definitely got a lot better over this. In some ways, it felt like Edge was a little bit nervous here. It, it definitely did. Edge looked really young here. Uh, you know, Triple H actually did do a spine buster to Lita out of nowhere. So that was another instance where they're, you know, just, just trying to get Triple H ready for that babyface run. You know, the fans really, it definitely felt like the fans really were behind Triple H more than anybody here. Even, you know, some of the women were in the Cena, but even most of the guys, I would say pro Triple H, Edge really didn't get a lot of support at all. But yeah, th this is, this is a good, a good triple threat match. Uh, I would, I would definitely say you could argue it being top 10 of all time. I think top five is a bit generous, but easily top 10 triple threat of all time. And um, yeah, one of, one of the best pay-per-view matches of 2006 without a doubt. So overall, I would say this is a very inconsistent show. But at the same time, you know, for a, for a brand-only pay-per-view, I, I would say it delivered. You know, the matches that were, you know, supposed to deliver really did. You know, the, the IC title match of Van Damme going over was, uh, you know, pretty sweet. You know, the, the main event was great. And, uh, you know, the Michael stuff with the Spirit Squad and, and Vince, you know, I, 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 would, I would say it, 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 did, it did what it was supposed to do. Just get you ready for Degeneration X. So that's Backlash 2006, and I'm out. All right.